So now I'm, I'm turning on my presentation, right? Or, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, right. Um, at first, I would like to thank you for the EdTech World Council of Supertraction Ventures and all the uh, audiences being here today to give me a chance to talk about the topic. I am uh, Robin Nguyen. Yeah, I'm a founder and CEO at IBI Global. Um, at first, uh, we started um, the English Language Center for Children, and we learned a lot about customer inside, what the student uh, inside, and what their strength and weaknesses. And two years later, we we launched uh, uh, IBI Global e-learning platform in 2013. And you know that what at that time uh, is it's worth right, the right timing for us because when we went out and asked people, uh, do you think that uh, education technology or e-learning is, is very effective or even it can relate classroom training or not? Most of people don't believe that. And now it's the, with the pandemic, it's a, a, a lot of things is very different right now. Um, and we, at that time, our team, uh, found that the bigger challenging for e-learning is learner engagement. And that's why we have the IBI e-learning platform to, with the concept that replacing classroom training, especially for language training or, or business skill. Yeah, and, and that's why we have IBI Global today. Yeah. Uh, now, can I turn on the, my presentation or you, you will turn it on for, okay. So my topic today is uh, ed tech and local understanding. Um, because as you know, IBI Global is work with a lot of uh, corporation and company and we know that uh, local understanding is a really important thing that can help uh, companies or Cooperation to really grow in the global uh, in the global economy, and this is the agenda uh, for today. I will talk about the challenges in international workplaces, why local understanding, and how can EdTech advance local and cultural understanding, global e-learning uh, methodology to enhance understandings and collaboration for international business. Yeah. Challenges in international workplaces. Robin, just wanted to let you know that your, your screen sharing isn't working. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's, that's all right. Uh, okay, okay, again. Perfect, there we go. All right. Yeah, challenges in international workplace uh, is so many things, and, but I would like to share with you some key things that we have uh, faced uh, with when we have trained our, our different cooperation. The first thing is communication issues. It is happened in a lot of international companies right now. Uh, we remember that before when we trained Nestle, uh, for their engineers. And you know that engineers in Vietnam, it's not only in Vietnam, but I think in most of countries in Southeast Asia and Asia, uh, they are very good at technical things, but English and communication is a big problem. So that's why at that time we came to uh, Nestle factory and we uh, we screen on, on the processes and we work with the engineering and we, uh, and we found that the key thing is uh, a lot of engineering can read uh, technical works, but how to communicate with the foreigners or really understand the instruction of the new machine come uh, or even they work with different uh, department is really big problems. So that's why at that time we conducted the training and, and we found that it's very effective. 
So communication issue is just something that uh, not only the language, but also, also the culture differences is, is uh, the big thing for international in, in in workplaces right now. Um, for example, like in Vietnam, we still like this. People, managers from Hanoi in the north of Vietnam, still hiring a lot of uh, employee or staff from Hanoi from the north because they thought that w with that culture, they can work together very well. well. And the same thing with the manager in the middle, they also hire a lot of staff in the middle too. The same thing with people in Bangkok, they don't like people in Chiang Mai or even you know, people in Hangzhou, they're not, not going very well with people in Shanghai. Culture differences is not only in international workplace, but also in, inside a country, a nation is also happen a lot. And, and that's, when that's happened, uh, we have political issue or you know, office politics always happen in, in, in that. Um, uh, for example, like in Vietnam right now, we have a lot of expats come here to work, but we, we still not have an international culture like Singapore or some other countries because it's still developing. And, and we know that uh, how uh, a foreigner or a, a foreign experts can bring their expertise into uh, the operation in Vietnam is a big thing also because normally uh, the managers, Vietnamese manager will take over the operation or sales because they understand the customer inside, understand the local culture and how the experts can bring the expertise to change the processing or, or to work with the local manager is also the very big things right now in, in I, I, I don't think it's only in Vietnam, but in Thailand or China, it's also uh, the same problems. Yeah. And we have the third one is the flexibility. When we go to flexibility, it means that because we live in different culture, so we make decision based on our own experiences or background. That thing happens when everyone has our own bias and this bias will address our, our decision making and work with other people. And the fourth thing is implementing diversity. Implementing diversity is, is not easy at all. We have been through our for many years and globalization is where they happened for many years, but we still see that you know the the inequality between men and women in international workplace or in the career path or you know or or, or culture differences um, and it, uh, something like that is still happening a lot in 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 our world why local understanding yeah, you, we, we, all un, we all know that local understanding is very important for international workplace and also for, for companies or startups who want to go global. The first thing is to live harmoniously in multicultural cultural community. Like I, I just share with you that now XMAT is, is growing and they play a very important uh, part in, in our rowing economy uh, because with, with XMAT we can bring different uh, thinking and ideas and expertise and culture into our corporation or company. But how to live harmoniously is that every company is or Corporation or startup needs a very, uh, very good strategy for that. Uh, for, um, for example, uh, we uh, here we have, uh, I have a friend from Italy and, and she came here 
try to uh, under, um, uh, understand the processing or the operation of the manufacturing. And she put a lot of new ideas and all that. And, and later on, she, she found that it's very difficult to really convince the local managers or, or, or clients. And, and that is also the problem for, for, for international workplace. Uh, to try in dynamic or marked by constant innovations. Right now, if we talk about uh, the labor market, I think it's very important because now most of company right now uh, try to reach global or to go international. And it's very good if a Japanese person, uh, if we have a Japanese salesman to really work with a Japanese uh, customer or clients. Based on our, uh, it depends on our customer base that how much that diverse this company is, but to manage and to roll, we need different people from different cultures. And with, with that customer base, we need different, uh, we need a diverse team to really grow in the market. Uh, and, and, and this is very good for the labor market and really help company grow because the research show that uh, company with the best practice in diversity, diversity is uh, already grow revenue for uh, 24, 25% more than all the companies. So the, the diver team are the key to success in many jobs and many companies too. And the last thing is we talk about the sustainable development uh, because right now we have uh, climate change, uh, you know, a lot of global issue, pandemic, and all that we need a local act. And the local act really under the global strategy. And for that, with local understanding, we can really help the new generation employees to improve um, community responsibility and also understanding and also uh, backed by uh, cooperation, the activity of cooperation is really have the society, also the economic role in the sustainable way. Uh, yeah, diversity, the engine of invention, it generate creativity and enrich it out the world. Yeah, um, I have my own story about the innovation when we have diversity. When we created IBI, you know, we work with academic uh, people from different culture like the US or UK because, you know, we, uh, we have 100% uh, na native speaker training. And at that time, when we try to create the IBI learning platform, our IT guy also, you know, zero knowledge about e-learning or how to create the platform at that time. We, we, we were very struggling with that. And, and because I'm, I was the team leader, how to connect the technology team uh, no, with, without any English. And I work with the academic team uh, to be with content and also the pedagogy and everything. But back by the IT team, Vietnamese IT engineers, they are very good at the curiosity and they try their best, their best to make it happen, even if something is very new. Um, and, and, you know, when we talk with our IT guy and then they say that, okay, after three months, they may have the very draft version. But after three months, when I get back to ask them, they say, no, they cannot do anything. And it's, it's were very, uh, how can I say that? I, I was very disappointed. And, and after that, we, we worked together very, very closely in, in every step of uh, how, how to build up the platform and everything. And, 
and link and from from my or concept that you know we need a platform can replace classroom training based on the blended e-learning model and from that we work with the, the, the academic team because we have Vietnamese uh, ver uh, uh, very good Vietnamese IT guys and we work with people from UK academic team from UK and the US and we, we can find that you know all the ideas or all the all, all things can can happen if we can connect everything together in a diverse uh, in a diverse team yeah so I, I, I really uh, think that diversity the engine of innovation and 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 an invention Yeah, so how can EdTech advance local and cultural understanding? Yeah, uh, that's one of our key advantage of our platform is we believe that with culture diversity training and education, we can have clients or corporation or startup can advance local understanding and also innovation. With traditional uh, education, it 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 takes you know it uh, a company need a training manager to go around uh, with his or her expertise and train people, but with ed tech right now we have uh you know co a co collaboration platform and we have if we can connect with the experts from different culture and background and from that we can bring the training to a corporation or a startup and people learn from the real experts from from different background and culture. And we believe that it's really how business and employee broaden their understanding of, of local realities. Yeah, um, and EdTech really can, can help that because like uh, for many years ago when we uh, uh, set up the platform, at that time, more most of the platform is MOOC or even like just cell-based learning. And, you know, after that, we see a collaboration platform through Skype or live classroom training um, or some company that just do like cell-based or just app like they just uh, supplement uh, for a subject. Uh, the thing is, we need a proper, uh, a proper pedagogy or the method behind that. That's what we are lacking right now for EdTech. Because EdTech is not only technology. EdTech is more about education. And EdTech is more about people and learners inside. Student demanding is very different and the second thing is what they demand is not only cell-based or not only supplementary. They want something bigger. And that's why we find that if EdTech can have a very, with, right now we have uh, enough with AI, we have with personal life, we have with the different technology already. So if we can put a proper methodology behind that, and then we, we can ensure that EdTech can help a lot for, for people to connect, to understand, and roll together. Proper e-learning methodology can really enhance understanding the collaboration. 
yeah, for sure. We have a lot of stories about our clients. For example, uh, before we train English for Sin Sinchenta. Sinchenta, Singenta has a lot of salesmen or sales supervisor in, in uh, you know, spreading out in, in all over the country. Uh, but the thing is that all the salesmen is not, not very good in communicating English and reporting in English because their boss are uh, uh, Indian. And how to help they communicate uh, perfectly and can we re make report and everything that's and and with flexible times also uh, space because they always going out and then never go to the company and they, they, they live in different uh, provinces and at that time we conduct a training communication training for all salesmen of Sinkenta in, in, in all over the nation. And the good thing is that uh, the engagement is very high because before when, when uh, the company conducted the training for the salesmen, at first they have 25 students in one class, but at the end of the course, there's only two students. But we still keep at the end of the course people uh, the salesman and supervisor and manager also keep 80% of engagement. That be, and we believe that only EdTech can do that. Uh, traditional ed education cannot do that, especially for professionals in international workplace. The four dimensions of local understanding that can be supported by the blended e-learning methodology. Why we talk about blended e-learning? Because we, we know that cell-based learning only, or live classroom only, is not really health. It's still lack of something. The blended e-learning is the combination between cell-based learning and live classroom training. But the methodology behind that is the flip learning. A student, if they learn something, they learn a lesson before they go live with their teachers and peers, is really more effective than they just only learn by themselves or go live with the teacher passively. So that methodology that right now we can also can do it in the classroom, but we move up into the online one and it's really effective also. For example, we have uh, English training. Uh, this, a student can learn uh, like vocabulary, reading, listening, pronunciation, uh, by themselves 24 7 with our cell-based learning but they have knowledge already but because this is language so they don't know how to use this and they will go live with the teachers and peers to really use the knowledge what they already have in the cell-based learning also for our innovation courses the same thing Student will cell based learning the lesson, uh, for example, lesson one. And after that, they go live with the teacher with all the knowledge they already have. And when they go to see the instructor and peers, what they do is problem solving, sharing ideas, uh, solving the real problem. It's not listening to the teacher passively. In that way, uh, we can see the efficiency and the effectiveness, effectiveness of e-learning, of the blended e-learning methodology. Or we can say that flip e-learning methodology. Because we believe that 
learning language is not easy. Also, learning a skill, a soft skill or an innovation skill, it really takes time and also need time to observe and apply and get back. It needs a very long process to make it happen, right? So with this methodology, we can ensure to have learners to get knowledge about other culture, especially with the platform that we can connect expert from different culture. For example, a student from Vietnam can learn with an expert from Singapore or Israel, or a student from Singapore can also work with an expert from the US. In that way, people, people can be enhanced in innovation because they see different things in their learning, in, in, in different experts. They talk with real experts with different knowledge and culture. And from that way, they can view up their culture understanding, their knowledge enhancement, and also their product ideas will be happen. So, and their sub is also very changing because we believe that when we talk with a foreigner or, or an expert from different culture, we tend to listen and we tend to observe. And during those courses, a learner can observe it slowly. And, it's, and, and, and later on, they can build the, 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 the product for, for, for international, for global. It's not just very single-minded that they had before, right? And this also can help learner develop adaptability and openness. For sure, because when they learn with different experts, different people from different culture, they will be more be open and recognize and appreciate diversity. With those uh, dimensions of, lo of local understanding, uh, we we can we can see that education for the future need to really take it into consideration. It's not only ed tech, but education for K-12 or any, or, or, but ed tech is, is, is a bridge building for, for local understanding in the efficiency, in the efficient and effective way. And, 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 and with that, I, I, I believe that uh, ed tech really can be the bridge for global uh, competence or local understanding with the right e-learning methodology. Yeah, thank, thanks a lot for, for your uh, listening. And I hope that you can have some questions and then or even uh, you have any ideas or opinions we can share. And I am very happy uh, about that. Thank you so much, Robin. It was, it was super interesting and it's so true. And even we've had calls with companies uh, talking about their struggles going abroad and it's partly because it's so different on the ground and you just need to have a local understanding. And it's really great that uh, you've managed to create something to help people in that way. Um, so let's see, we have, we've gotten some questions already. Um, uh, for the people in the audience, if you want to ask more questions, you still have time. There should be uh, a button somewhere for you to submit them. Um, but if you wanted to speak, you could raise your hand and I will allow you to speak later. Um, so we have a message from um, Mukahit uh, who says, hello Robin, 
I have had great experience in Vungtau province teaching kids English as an instructor as an instructor for a year. And I believe your observations in the field will empower the meta level progressions and solutions you will provide for the future of EdTech. Uh, best wishes from Turkey. So that wasn't really a question, but it was very nice. Um, thank you. So thank yeah. you for that. Yeah. Um, so we have a question. Uh, I guess this, you kind of answered this, but if you wanted to say something else, um, what advice would you give to companies trying to go to Vietnam and to Southeast Asia? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, Vietnam and Southeast Asia have uh, a very different culture. I don't know um, uh, if you're from like Europe, if you're from Asia, it's easier to understand the um, uh, Vietnamese culture. But if you're really from Europe, or America is is really uh, a little bit difficult because for Vietnamese culture, we are still uh, uh, peop people are still a little bit traditional. Uh, people from Ho Chi Minh City like us is more open, uh, but um, the corporate structure is still high, uh, higher, uh, uh, you know, that's a level of hierarchy is still high. Uh, still, you know, community making decision. So that's why uh, uh, getting business in Vietnam or even in 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 China or Japan is or Korea is a little bit uh, a little bit similar that you have you need a lot of time and relationship uh, building um, and 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 in that way is it is a little bit struggling for for the new business to get into uh, Vietnam or Asian culture uh, Asian culture. Uh, in, in, in general, uh, and Vietnam markets right now is very, very competitive because if you see the, um, the economy in Vietnam is uh, the level of openness is, is very high. So, um, you know, one, uh, a lot of people doing business and, and, and very, very competitive. And I believe that it's happened in, in, in other countries too. Uh, right now in, in the globalization, the, compet uh, the competition is very harsh for, for, for a new business in general. Understand culture and adapt to the culture. I think that it takes a little bit of time, but it's not a big thing. The big thing is still competition. So we have another question related to this, and it would be, what, what is the biggest mistake that corporates do when they, when they go to Vietnam? Actually, uh, a corporate, when they go to Vietnam, uh, most of them, if they are corporate already, they, they did a lot of research and, and all that. So uh, uh, that is a very good way to enter the new market. And, and a lot of things like, you know, they, they acquire some business and they learn. But the, the difficulty is how to bring uh, the culture diversity into the new company in Vietnam is, is the thing. Because most of company, they, they bring their, their, their uh, they, they, I mean, the global structure or, or, or the global expertise into Vietnam and that it really take time to match with the local culture and also uh, local managers and, and, and understand the, the clients. Uh, understand clients, you, we can do through research and everything, but actually get into uh, the reality because if a company from Europe is where, you know, your thinking and your uh, mindset is a, very, a little bit different. So that's why it takes a little bit time to match with the local culture. So we have a question about the, the startup ecosystem in, in Vietnam. 
um, do, do you know a lot of a lot of companies in the area? Yeah, uh, we have uh, the ecos um, the the startup ecosystem is already. Uh, I mean, for the past two, three years, the government really support in Vietnam. We have many Vietnamese accelerators already came up and the ecosystem is there. Um, uh, we have uh, a lot of events for, for startups and, and even the ecosystem is not, is not done yet, but it's still a lot of activity and uh, to 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 have it happen uh, for 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 ag tech in Vietnam is something very niche, very special. I I don't I but not only in Vietnam in other country ag tech is very special. It's not I mean it's not easy and it's need the real. Uh, I mean the real founder for education it's not it's not business edu it's not business education for business but it's need real uh, educator to do it so there are a lot of tech techs in vietnam and goes up and downs and you know people comes up with with some trendy like sky for like classroom but actually really invested and understand uh the the market also the side of the market also the learner inside is still is still the lacking of education technology in in vietnam but i don't think only in vietnam but uh but but for many countries we are now still struggling of of, of remodeling uh education uh, uh, techno ed education technology uh, uh, we, we, we still are working out on that. I guess kind of going off of that, um, what do you, how, how are people consuming e-learning in Vietnam? Are they using phones, is it computers? How are people engaging with this new technology that is now such a big part of our lives? Yeah, yeah, right. So actually for young people over here, most of them, you know, they know very, uh, they know basic technology and with the technology right now, it's not difficult for them to get into a platform or something. Uh, uh, yeah, but the, the, but for K2 trail is different. K2 trail is not many students can have a laptop or phone or something like that. It's, it's, it's still a big gap over there. It's only, uh, but for, uh, for adults or corporate market, we, we, we don't have any difficulty about, for, uh, about the you know, technology, technology devices. But the thing is, uh, before, like five years ago, that uh, we, we can have customers like, you know, very quick and very easy. But right now, the competition is more, uh, people, uh, a lot of uh, technology, education technology, but more about technology. That's mean they supply uh, for in, in, in for the company, like building internal uh, training and all that. Before a company is very, they, they build by themselves. Big, big company, they build by themselves, but they fail. But now they are supplies in Vietnam and also in international camp. And then the market becomes very competitive. Yeah. Um, so we have a question from Katie who says, since our company in Vietnam is having relevant issues of diversity and communication across all teams, how long do you think it is necessary that EdTech could resolve this issue? So they have a platform, but it seems that uh, there's a lack of student engagement, like you said. Mm. Actually, gross function or gross cultural communication is still happen a lot in international company. Um, but the thing is, uh, how education is 
the first thing if we look about if we, we look to our clients the this means the company or corporation need to have a very clear strategy about uh, culture diversity and, 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 and culture diversity training or communication training or some soft skill to deliver uh, uh, culture diversity that that the first thing that the client or the company need to have the strategy first for for the supplier like you know education provider ethic provider we need to have the right solution for the right company but our platform need to be ready for cooperation cooperation they don't they what, what do they need they don't only the content not enough live classroom training so many right now with zoom with you know google uh, classroom everything they need the solution the third one is our why your platform can help them draft the ROI or your platform can enhance the student learning uh, result. Just for example, uh, we have uh, some company they learn with other uh, company platform and you know because of the engagement, uh, half of student after two months they paint the course, right? So education technology is just like a school operation offline, but we bring online. We not only need content, we not only need the tracking, we not only need the system, but also customer service. Uh, customer services, we also need the proper methodology. We also need teachers relations student and teacher relationship all that when we combine together we can make it happen but the second thing is the market the sales we have very good product already but how to sell it or how to build a solution for you for for your client is a big in another big thing also because in the very competitive market so i think it's still is still a very, is still a long way for, for many com ex tech companies right now. For, uh, and your question is about how long we can bridge the gap for the diversity in one company. Uh, we, 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 we cannot, uh, we cannot uh, say, we cannot say anything in advance because it is the coordination between the company or the HR department, the strategy of the company with the tech provider if and how much problem does the company have inside so it should be long or it should be short it, it depends so we have another question about um challenges when it comes to to employing tech in this way so Mukhit asks how what do you consider the future of orientation processes for newcomers to an international company by using the edtech instruments? Uh, can, can you repeat? Yeah, yeah. So uh, for, for new employees at, at um, for the orientation of new employees at companies at international companies, how, how would these, how would these instruments edtech instruments be applied for that? Oh, yeah, so sort of longer term, you know, so you've trained your employees. I think that's what what this question is asking. You've trained your employees. You, you have new people joining in. How, yeah. how do you keep this uh, uh, going? Yeah, uh, for the new employee training is It's a strategy. It's a strategy. But right now I can see many corporations, they have internal e-learning. That's mean they have like, you know, a very, uh, they, they have some uh, short courses or orientation online. But, but the big thing is, it's not engaged because they think, uh, because they, they view by themselves and it's not professional enough for, 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 for 
employee to really engage with their their small courses they put online and they you know um, the, a lot of thing uh, I can see that the internal e-learning is it, it doesn't work very well I, I can see that for many for many uh, companies just like this is all transformation many companies fail ERP e-learning is very, the very the same thing uh, so uh, your uh, your question is about how we train it is really a long strategy and process it how to train the new employee how and the pathway for that employee to go up um, otherwise after one year or two years they will you know they will be uh, saturated and they find the new job it's very this is, is happen everywhere so that's a a very uh, long strategy for a company to build it you need to uh, train the new employees you need to understand their pathway their potential and keep the training to the key person for the new uh, position. That's a very big thing for HR. The training for a company right now, uh, most of companies right now, they do a lot of coaching inside. But hiring an ag tech company or a provider from outside is a very good tool because you bring new ideas and new technology and also the new concept to building up your team and make the uh, and make uh, the team more open um, so uh, I can I, I just can answer like this but uh, currently it, it really depends on uh, the HR or people or personal development of every company. Thank you so much. And I think with that, uh, the, the only question that we have left is about the EdTech book presentation at the beginning. And um, whoever submitted this, uh, please reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm Karen Wasserstein. You can find me otherwise through Supercharger and I can send you the materials. Um, and I think this is perfect timing to thank you again so much for your presentation. I think we all, we all learned a lot and it's been a very different topic this time, uh, but equally important and actually fundamental to success in a new market. Uh, yeah. So I think it, it will give us all something to think about when, when making business decisions in the future. Um, so yeah, on behalf of everyone, thank you so much again. All right. Thank, thanks a lot, Karen. And again, thanks for uh, the EdTech World and the, uh, the Super Truck Venture and all the audience to be here to, uh, today. Thanks a lot uh, for your time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.